John from Digital Foundry here with our final piece on Uncharted, the Nathan Drake Collection. This time we're looking at Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. First released in 2011, Uncharted 3 remains the most divisive of Naughty Dog's PlayStation 3 games. Coming off the second game, the hype surrounding the release of Drake's Deception was immense, and some might argue that it failed to live up to those expectations. Yet, there's still an incredibly well-crafted game here. When separated from the hype, it's better than you might remember. One area in which there is little room for debate, however, lies in its technical accomplishments. Uncharted 3 stands as one of the most visually ambitious titles to have graced Sony's last generation console. Pushing effects work, animation, and scene complexity through the roof, it is a marvelous looking game. While it lacks the larger levels and impressive indirect lighting of The Last of Us, it offers a spectacle that still manages to outmatch many games released today. As a result of its technical prowess, Bluepoint was handed a task rather different from the rest of this collection. Looking back at the first two Uncharted games, we noted large quantities of remade assets that sought to eliminate rough edges. With Uncharted 3, that's not really the case. Assets remain very similar to the original game throughout, Bluepoint has instead focused more on refinement of existing assets more than anything else. There are certainly improvements here, but you'll need a careful eye to spot them. Of course, the first and perhaps most important change is one which directly benefits gameplay. That is, a reduction in input latency. When Uncharted 3 first launched, users complained of sluggish aiming in comparison to its prequels. In response, Naughty Dog implemented an alternate aiming mode in the first patch. Yet even with this change, the game just doesn't feel quite right. In the move to PlayStation 4, however, Bluepoint has been given the opportunity to finally put this issue at rest. As with the rest of the package, Drake's Deception now offers quick responsive controls that are a pleasure to use. No longer did we find ourselves overcorrecting our aim during shootouts, nor struggling to deliver headshots. More than with any other game in this collection, the improvements made to the controller response completely transformed the experience. The improvements here go hand in hand with its frame rate, the next key upgrade. Despite its technical superiority over its prequels, Uncharted 3 turns in magnificent performance on PlayStation 4. We encountered performance dips in a handful of areas, but by and large, we're looking at a very stable 60 frames per second here. We were concerned that some of the performance limitations encountered in The Last of Us Remastered would make an appearance, but we're happy to report that's not the case at all. Then we turn to image quality, and here we find results consistent with the rest of the collection. A full 1080p output with excellent post-process anti-aliasing along with variable texture filtering. On PS3, Uncharted 3 utilized a much less refined post-process solution that struggled with long edges and high contrast areas resulting in plenty of shimmering. The implementation on PS4 has a transformative effect on more complex areas. Now with the basics covered, Let's take a closer look at the finer details present in this remastered iteration of the game. Unlike the previous two games, the changes here are of the more subtle variety, so let's get started, shall we? Starting here, as we make our way through this building, take a look around. We see a handful of improved textures throughout this scene. The ceiling in particular is much sharper on PS4. The benefits of improved texture filtering also shine through. Texture quality is an area where we see the most change in terms of assets. While a lot of the surfaces utilize the original textures, if you look closely, you'll find plenty of improvements. Look at the ground here, for instance. Note the sharper textures. Or perhaps the surfaces within this plane compartment. Many of these changes are just subtle enough that the difference isn't made clear until the camera is within close proximity of the surface. Back out into the hallway, as we turn the corner we actually see one of the strange inconsistencies here. Look at the shadows in this scene. Here we actually see a stair-stepping artifact on PS4 which is somewhat exacerbated over the original. Looking at these shadows from a different angle however reveals a different method of filtering that produces slightly softer results on PS4. This cutscene here helps demonstrate the difference a bit better. Here we see slightly higher resolution shadow maps on the PS4 side along with improved filtering. Here's another real-time example. On PS3, the lack of filtering is extremely evident here, resulting in obvious pixelation along shadow edges. 
On PS4, the extra filtering improves quality quite a bit, even if the resolution of the shadow map itself remains relatively low. The next scene demonstrates dynamic shadows cast by Drake's torch, and here we see a noticeable improvement on PS4 as well. Shadows are rendered at a slightly higher resolution. Also note the improved textures in this scene. How about this section? Note how much more diffused the shadows appear on the ground here in the PS4 version. While we're on the subject of shadows, let's take a look at changes made to ambient occlusion. This cutscene demonstrates a pretty significant difference. Look at Drake's legs here on PS3. Notice the obvious silhouette around his body? Now, on PS4, the effect has been modified. AO is still utilized on PS4, but the effect is of a higher precision, which means we no longer see instances such as this. Contact shadows should not appear where objects have no contact with the scenery. How about this section? Watch as Sully passes through the pipe's contact shadow. Note how it interferes with the ambient occlusion effect on PS3. This effect is consistent throughout the game, and much improved on PS4. Looking again at young Drake, while the video compression makes this difficult to say for sure, it does appear that we might actually be seeing improved subsurface scattering on his face here. Another improvement we noted involves volumetric lighting. Uncharted 3 makes great use of this effect in a number of situations, and on PS4 the implementation is of higher quality. When objects pass in front of these light beams, for instance, we see artifacts on PS3 as a result of the lower precision. And here's another curious difference we noted. One of the most impressive sequences in the game involves the burning down of an old chateau. They look very similar, but we noted that the red glow emanating from the flames has been reduced on PS4. This seems to be consistent with other sequences which use color bleeding of the red channel to emphasize a high intensity light source. We also noticed an increase in depth of field quality. On PS3, foreground objects placed against an out of focus backdrop tend to exhibit edge artifacts where the two intersect. On PS4, the effect has been improved and artifacts eliminated as a result. There are a few other oddities we noticed while playing the game that we just have to mention. For instance, here, there appears to be a shadow from the wood beam projected up upon the wall on PlayStation 3, yet on PS4, this shadow is missing, and as a result, Drake's shadow appears to be floating. Also, this oddity shared between both versions is the flashlight effect. It follows the camera, and as a result, can wind up shining through Drake. Look at the beam in this shot. That really shouldn't be possible. Ultimately, as you can see, the differences between the two versions may be relatively minimal, but there are still plenty of changes here that push its quality beyond that of your typical remaster. On PS4, Uncharted 3 is an amazing looking and playing game. If you were lukewarm about the original PS3 release, now is the perfect time to give it another shot. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. Until next time, this is John, over and out.